Behind layers of granite and steel, in one of the most secure vaults in the world, lies billions of dollars in gold. When America was desperate to secure its wealth, the United States Bullion Depository emerged as the Fortress of Gold. But how did mountains of gold find their way to the most secure vault in America? And why was it stored here in the first place? Hey everyone, welcome back to Compelling History. Today, we're diving into the fascinating story of where America keeps its gold. I love gold! The United States Bullion Depository, better known as Fort Knox, is one of the most secure complexes in the United States, if not the world. But how did this heavily fortified storage facility come to exist? And does it even still hold any gold? Stick around until the end to find out the answers to both. If you're new here, we release videos every week exploring significant events, places, and people from history. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, and make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future content. Now that we've got that covered, let's get into the video. In the 1920s, the great American word was prosperity. Now the 30s have begun and there is a new word, depression. In a time of economic collapse, every move mattered. The story of Fort Knox isn't just about storing gold, it's about why the United States government decided it couldn't risk not building it. The story of the United States Bullion Depository begins long before Fort Knox became synonymous with security. It's a tale rooted in economic turbulence, legislative reforms, and the logistical challenges of managing a nation's gold. To understand why this high-security facility was built, we first need to step back to the Great Depression and the sweeping changes that followed. By 1933, the United States was reeling from the Great Depression, the worst economic downturn in its history. Unemployment soared, banks failed, and the gold standard, the foundation of the nation's currency, was under immense strain. Americans, gripped by fear, hoarded gold, withdrawing it from banks and further destabilizing the financial system. This wasn't just a banking crisis, it was a crisis of confidence in the very idea of money. In response, President Franklin D. Roosevelt launched a series of bold measures. He declared a nationwide bank holiday, passed emergency banking laws, and in 1933 issued Executive Order 6102, requiring citizens to turn over their gold to the federal government. A year later, the Gold Reserve Act of 1934 cemented this policy, transferring all gold to the Treasury, prohibiting its private ownership, and setting a new fixed price of $35 per ounce. This effectively devalued the dollar, increased gold reserves, and gave the government greater control over the money supply. The influx of gold posed a new problem, storage. Until then, gold was scattered across the country, stored in places like the Philadelphia and Denver Mints and the San Francisco Mint, known as the Granite Lady. These facilities, many established during the gold rushes of the 19th century, were designed for coin production, not to house the federal government's swelling gold reserves. As gold poured in from both domestic sources and international investors lured by the higher price, these facilities reached their limits. The need for a centralized, secure location became urgent. But this wasn't just about logistics. By the 1930s, global tensions were rising. The looming threat of war underscored the importance of safeguarding America's gold reserves. Not just as an economic asset, but as a symbol of stability and strength. Before the first brick was laid at the depository, the groundwork for its necessity had already been established. The economic chaos of the Great Depression, the sweeping reforms of the Gold Reserve Act, and the logistical strain of scattered gold reserves all pointed to one conclusion. America needed a fortress for its gold, and that fortress would not just protect the nation's wealth, but stand as a monument to its resilience and determination. The decision to construct the United States Bullion Depository at Fort Knox was as deliberate as the structure itself. Nestled within the rolling hills of northern Kentucky, the site was selected for its central location, natural defenses, and proximity to a pre-existing military installation. At the time, Fort Knox was already a burgeoning hub of military activity, offering a secure environment for the nation's wealth. 
the geographical isolation further reinforced its appeal. Its position behind the Appalachian Mountains and away from major railways and highways provided natural barriers against potential invaders. The construction of the depository began in 1936 during a period of heightened economic and political turmoil. Following the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, vast amounts of gold had been consolidated under federal control, necessitating a fortress capable of safeguarding this unprecedented accumulation of wealth. Congress approved the transfer of land from the military to the Treasury Department, and by the end of the year, the depository was complete. The project cost $560,000, equivalent to nearly $10 million today, a relatively modest expense given its monumental significance. Built with over 16,000 cubic feet of granite, 4,200 cubic yards of concrete, and 750 tons of reinforced steel, the depository was engineered to withstand nearly any imaginable threat. Its four-foot-thick granite walls are lined with concrete and reinforced steel, creating a formidable exterior that exudes strength. The roof, designed to be bomb-proof, incorporates steel beams and concrete, ensuring resilience against aerial attacks. Elevated guard boxes stand at each corner of the building, offering optimal vantage points for surveillance. Beneath this fortress lies the heart of its operation, a two-story steel and concrete vault measuring 40 by 60 feet. Constructed by the Mosler Safe Company, the vault is encased in 25 inches of steel and concrete and is secured by a 22-ton blast-proof and drill-resistant door. The vault features multiple compartments, each sealed by smaller, equally fortified doors. Accessing the vault is no simple feat. Its main door operates on a 100-hour time lock and requires a coordinated effort from multiple staff members, each possessing only a portion of the combination. This multi-layered system ensures that no single individual can access the gold independently, further enhancing security. The security measures at Fort Knox extend far beyond its structural integrity. The facility is surrounded by multiple layers of defense, including a high steel fence, razor wire, and motion-activated surveillance systems. Armed guards from the United States Mint Police patrol the perimeter, supported by military personnel from the adjacent Fort Knox Army installation. This level of protection has only increased over time, with the integration of advanced technology like high-resolution night vision cameras, microphones, and alarm systems. Nearby, Apache attack helicopters stationed at Godman Army Airfield stand ready to respond to any threat. The gold's transport to the depository was itself a marvel of logistical and security planning. During the 1930s, gold reserves were relocated from New York and Philadelphia to Fort Knox to mitigate risks of coastal invasions. Transport convoys, heavily armed and carefully disguised, moved the bullion under tight security. The operation was executed with military precision, solidifying Fort Knox's reputation as an impenetrable stronghold. By its completion in December 1936, the United States Bullion Depository stood as both a literal and symbolic bulwark of American wealth and stability. Over the decades, it has become synonymous with security, earning the phrase as safe as Fort Knox. While its exact contents remain shrouded in secrecy, the depository's construction and ongoing security measures stand as a testament to the ingenuity and determination of an era defined by resilience and preparation. When you think of Fort Knox, gold is probably the first thing that comes to mind. But that's only part of the story. Over the decades, this impenetrable fortress has safeguarded more than just gold. Its vaults have temporarily hosted some of the most significant artifacts in history, and even stockpiles of essential medical supplies. Let's take a closer look. As of today, the depository holds an official tally of 147.3 million troy ounces of gold, valued at approximately $6.22 billion, using a 1973 fixed rate of $42 per ounce. Adjust that to current market prices, and the reserves are worth closer to $274 billion. The vast majority of this gold is in the form of 400 troy ounce bars, each weighing about 27 pounds. The initial wave of shipments to Fort Knox began in 1937, a direct result of Executive Order 6102 in 1933. 
The shipments, overseen by the U.S. Post Office Department, moved 157.82 million troy ounces to Fort Knox between January and June of 1937. This operation involved 39 trains with 215 cars, guarded by postal workers, secret service agents, and armed military personnel. Decoy trains were also used to mislead potential robbers. By 1941, a second wave of gold shipments brought the depository's total reserves to 416.56 million troy ounces, representing over 65% of the nation's gold supply at the time. At its peak in October 1941, the U.S. held an astounding 80% of the world's gold reserves, much of it securely locked away in Fort Knox. Fort Knox's vaults have housed more than monetary wealth. During World War II, fears of an attack on Washington, D.C. prompted the transfer of foundational documents to the depository, including the original copies of the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. These priceless artifacts were stored from late 1941 until they were returned to Washington in 1944. Even a copy of the Magna Carta on loan to the U.S. for the 1939 World's Fair found refuge at Fort Knox until 1946 when the war ended. In the aftermath of World War II, Fort Knox became the temporary home of the Hungarian crown jewels, including the crown of St. Stephen. U.S. authorities took custody of the jewels to prevent them from falling into Soviet hands. These treasures remained at Fort Knox until they were returned to Hungary in 1978. Fort Knox's role expanded during the Cold War, when the U.S. military began stockpiling critical medical supplies. By 1955, the depository stored over 68,000 pounds of opium and morphine sulfate, enough to supply the entire country's medical needs for a year in case of a global conflict or supply disruption. These reserves were converted entirely into morphine sulfate in 1993, extending their shelf life. Today, Fort Knox no longer holds these materials. The secrecy surrounding Fort Knox has fueled countless rumors. Officially, the only contents confirmed by audits are the gold reserves. However, the vault's reputation as a safe haven for critical assets has led many to wonder what else might be hidden behind those 20-ton doors. Classified documents, foreign gold reserves, or even other historical treasures, the U.S. government remains tight-lipped, adding to the mystique. Whether it's gold bars or national artifacts, the contents of Fort Knox symbolize more than material wealth. They represent a nation's resolve to safeguard its heritage and resources against the uncertainties of history. With its heavy security, thick granite walls, and an aura of untouchability, Fort Knox is often seen as the impenetrable vault of America's wealth. But could it be hiding an empty truth? As we mentioned at the start of this video, we'll also take a quick look whether or not the gold is even still in the Bullion Depository. Fort Knox, officially known as the United States Bullion Depository, has long been the centerpiece of American wealth and financial security. But with its imposing granite walls, high security measures, and restricted access, it's also fertile ground for conspiracy theories. Chief among them is the persistent question, is there any gold left inside? One of the most enduring conspiracy theories posits that Fort Knox has been emptied of its gold reserves, either secretly sold off or moved elsewhere. This idea gained traction in the 1970s when public trust in the government was at an all-time low due to scandals like Watergate and economic turmoil from abandoning the gold standard. Critics demanded audits, and when few were forthcoming, suspicions deepened. One of the last time the vault was open to civilians was in 1974, during a carefully controlled congressional tour. Since then, the government has repeatedly insisted the gold is still there, but no comprehensive public audit has been conducted. One of the only times the vault has been open since was in 2017 when Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin visited the complex with a small delegation of officials, along with his wife. Skeptics often point to Fort Knox's function as more symbolic than practical. In a world where fiat currency dominates, does storing massive gold reserves even make sense? And if the gold is still inside, why has the government resisted proving it? For some, these unanswered questions are enough to conclude that Fort Knox might just be an empty fortress. Of course, officials and economists frequently debunk these theories. 
The U.S. Department of the Treasury maintains that over 147 million ounces of gold remain securely locked away, valued at over $250 billion. But without fresh, transparent evidence, the mystery persists, and so does the fascination. In the end, Fort Knox's secrets may never fully be known, and that's precisely what keeps the myths alive. After all, a locked door is irresistible to the curious mind. Thank you so much for watching our video exploring the history of the United States Bullion Depository. We hope you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more videos from us. Let us know in the comments below if you have any suggestions on videos you'd like to see covered. Before you go, make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more history-related content.